Scorched Earth set to come out on March 31st. What can we expect as a PvP player in the PvP community? Originally they were going to move center to be before Scorched Earth, but now they've changed their mind and Scorched Earth is coming out first. So what can we expect? Will the ascension be the same? Will it be different? Will they make it harder? Will they add extra things into the boss fight? Who knows? That's one thing we need to find out straight away. On top of that, they're adding new dinosaurs, just like the Philosophus. I don't know how to say that. I'm so bad. I'm sorry. They're adding that, I think this is the one that's supposed to do damage to saddles, because saddles have durability these days in Arc Ascended. So, the gameplay will change up a lot. But they also released another thing, which was Bob's Arc Tall Tales which is something super interesting in my opinion. I think it could be a cool thing, to be honest. However, when it comes to PvP, they've added a new animation for when you kill the Manticore. He ends up flopping over and putting his hand over his face, and then the whole arena changes and turns into a solar system, which will obviously bring you into the ascension that it's now become. You can now gain 15 levels by being the Scorched Earth. However, the Scorched Earth boss fight was way too easy for PvP. It literally was easily done with just a couple rhinos. They need to make it harder, they need to make it more difficult, more challenging. They need to make it maybe even a cave like the island. If it's an ascension, it needs to be waves of fights. It should be against worms, it should be against wyverns, it should be against heaps of things. Will they change it? If they don't, then it kind of is a bit of a letdown in my opinion because an ascension is supposed to be difficult. If you're gaining 15 levels, you need you need a challenge. It needs to be a challenge to get those 15 levels, otherwise it's just an empty thing. Like, Scorched Earth is boring. Once you beat one boss, that's all you have. There's nothing else to do except for fight each other. And that will bring us to another thing that we need to talk about in the uh, further in the video is caves and what they plan to do with caves and whether they'll add more. However, I've noticed on this uh, DLC that they're bringing out that you're going to be able to place train tracks around the map and drive a train. I to do that all my life. <laughs> With the addition of trains and the sandstorms that they mention and the Wild West raids, how is this going to work for PvP? Will it be broken? Will you be able to put turrets on it? Will you be able to ambush people's trains? Can anybody put trains down? Those are questions that we need answered that we'll find out on the 31st. As well, will the Ascension animation change? This is Ark Survival Evolved animation, and this is what it looks like. I had never seen it, in my opinion. I've never done it on Ark Survival Evolved because I just haven't played Scorched Earth and needed it recently. And I, I find it pretty cool. But will they change it? Is there going to be anything different? And also, with the trains, can anybody use them? Or will it be a DLC thing? Will it be pay to win? So if you don't have the DLC, can you not hop on it? Can you not stop it? Can someone raid you and ram it into your base? Or, you know, go around on a murder spree and kill everybody and nobody can hop on it and stop it? These are questions we need answered. And now that brings me on to another subject, caves and cave meta. They wanted to remove cave meta. They want to take out all choke points when it comes to caves, all crouch points and things like that. We found that and seen that on the island. Ice Cave got nerfed into the ground. Pack Cave had a root system put into where you would usually have a, a wall. Even Kano Cave has had changes. So will they change the caves on here? And will they make it so that Central Cave can't be buildable still? Because Central Cave used to only be buildable if you had a cliff platform, but that comes in aberration. And we don't have that yet. Does that mean you can't build in Central Cave at all? Is it a useless cave for this? start of this map that is a question that we need to find out as well and that will make a massive difference with where you build on day one that means church cave and maybe blue obby cave are the only caves you can build in otherwise you can be outside with a big floating dinosaur that people are going to start tame sniping you from and that could be an issue so that's one thing two things that we actually need to know And that brings me on to the pay to win oasis saw. This thing can revive downed dinosaurs, possibly even revive other people's downed dinosaurs. Does that mean that you can use it to kill your baby gigas and then revive them and then kill them and just like XP glitch it? It can float. It's a massive floating fortress. Is its health insane? Does it take massive damage from guns? I'm pretty sure they said it takes extra damage from firearms, which is a positive, so it doesn't become overpowered. However, 
there will be game breaking mechanics in it that we know will come because just like the titans they used to wipe out bases in just one single attack what can this thing do will they forget to be able to stop it from having shields on it generators on it turrets on it because of the way turrets are placed these days will it be fast is it slow do the resources constantly come back can you put re-fertilizer on it if that's even a thing still can you put that on it and just constantly get resources will it be one of the only ways to get resources on scorched earth and that's why it's introduced because scorched earth is going to be barren and as a pvp player you need to have resources because that is gold if you don't have that then you lose and that brings me to another point the people that claim church cave and blue obby cave and central cave are going to be the ones that are going to have tech and it's going to be even easier to stop people from getting tech you can literally prim lock everybody by just taking church cave that means nobody can get tech and everyone's just stuck at prim and that brings up another thing that we need to be thinking about as well guys and that is rock golems rock golems on scorched earth are insane for early game raiding even late game raiding if you don't have tech rock golems can soak your entire base if you use a pig with it real fast even without it if you just cycle them out rock golems are insane bullet sponges and they can take so much beating and just absolutely destroy your base so that is a balancing issue as well there's so much we need to know Will, they dri will people drive fortresses up under your base and then just put a rock golem on it? How will people raid? There's so many questions when it comes to Scorched Earth. The graphics of what it will look like could change dramatically as well. We don't even know what that's going to look like. Church Cave, in my opinion, will probably be one of the main caves that anybody should go for. Purely because if they introduce the same stuff as they did in arc survival evolved where you have to have a cliff platform to be able to build in central cave then that makes that one completely useless and makes church cave the strongest and best cave even if they do modify the entrance which it already has been a fair bit it's not a crouch point anymore people used to run it every single time so you could probably run it with tames anyway but that brings me to another point wyverns are coming back will they remodel the wyverns and make them look even more epic will they have new skills Will they make it even better for PvP? Will they make them broken? Wyverns used to be so fun to PvP with. They used to be one of my favorite mounts. The lightning, fire, and poison for all different reasons. And they used to trigger me at the same time. But what are they gonna do with those? And are they gonna add a new style of Wyvern? And that brings me on to a couple last things we need to think about when it comes to PvP and Scorched Earth. One of them being the damage that lightning storms cause to your generators. Is it still going to be a thing? If so, are they going to implement different storms? Like, are they going to be more intense? Are they going to burn wooden bases if it's a heat storm? There's so many questions that come with this that we're going to find out, which kind of excites me a little bit, to be honest. And that brings me back to another question. Flamethrower PvP is coming. And I know, as soon as you heard me say that, you cringed. I cringed a little bit as well because I used to use it because it was so OP. Are they gonna have a counteraction to that? Or is it gonna be super strong? Who knows? But we know it's coming. And we know everyone's gonna spam it when it's <laughs> when, when they get it. My God, this is gonna be toxic. This is gonna be so toxic. This also reminds me that Mantis are coming back. That means knocking people out, knocking pains out that are trying to rage you. That means we can take out raiders so much easier. And one of the final things is whips are back. Whips are back. That means if you get hit, you can actually whip people off finally. You can defend against flyers so much more. I'm excited. Guys, let me know down below what you think about Scorched Earth and what you're excited about, what you're nervous about. Do you like that it's DLC, there's DLCs that you have to get where you can't use things? Obviously, you're going to say no. And at the same time, are you excited to start your journey on Scorched Earth? It was one of my favorite maps besides Aberration. So I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like and what it's like if it comes out on time. But at the same time, I'm nervous because I know that it could be bad. I'm hoping for the best. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.